Hey everyone, welcome to this mini med lessons video. Uh, with this video, I'm gonna, going to be demonstrating how to remove staples from a skin laceration after it's been a sufficient number of days. These staples have to come out. How do you do that? What's the proper way to remove staples? But first, before I get to that, please go ahead and hit subscribe, hit like, hit that little bell thing so you get notifications. I really appreciate the support, so thank you. Uh, now jumping right in here, uh, this is a skin stapler. Uh, excuse me, staple remover. Notice it's very simple, small little metal thing. They're generally disposable, um, but there are some reusable ones that can be autoclaved as well, although it's not horribly a sterile procedure, but uh, you want to obviously be as clean as you can anytime you're working with wounds. Um, notice if you look real closely here at the edge of this, notice it has one side, it's a bit like a pair of pliers or scissors, and you can see that one size ha side has two teeth and the other one just has one. Okay, see that? And so that's very important to understand which one is up and uh, do you have two on the bottom or one on the bottom? And there's a correct way and a wrong way. So I'm gonna show both of those today as I demonstrate how to remove uh, staples from this laceration. So uh, the the best way to do this, the, the correct way to do this is to make sure that the two teeth are under the skin stapler excuse me, under the staple, so that as you close down by compressing here with your hand, it folds the staple backwards on itself, pulling the staple edges back out of the skin. If you were to do it upside down, you'd be shoving it further. So I'm gonna demonstrate the wrong way and then show you the right way as we remove these staples. Similar to removing sutures, it's best to do this as, in a, as clean of a way as possible. So it's, it's advisable to wear gloves. I'm not going to for the sake of the video today, I apologize. And uh, also, I always recommend using a sterile alcohol swab. Once you've removed a bandage, if the patient had a bandage to keep it covered, remove that, rip open an alcohol swab, and clean off the surface of the staples and area, not soaking it in alcohol but cleaning it off just to help prevent any infection although i don't feel like there's a whole lot of scientific evidence behind using that but you know it, it helps to create the the feeling for the patient that you're doing your best to keep it clean and and prevent infection okay so uh, after the alcohol is kind of dried off there then we're going to go ahead and remove these staples so again remember really important to have the the bottom part of your staple remover be the part that goes underneath that staple so that as you clamp down it's going to fold the staple backwards and you're going to kind of give gentle pressure back as you're pulling up so there's no pressure down towards the patient's skin notice how it just simply folded that suture that suture that staple backwards on itself pulling it out of the patient's skin pretty neat right but can you see how you could do that wrong as well? So let me demonstrate how you might do it incorrectly, and please don't do it this way. So if you were to have your, your staple remover upside down and one staple went, that one portion went under the patient's staple there, and then you were to clamp down this way, notice it's going to fold the staple the wrong way and it's going to hurt your patient, might even cause a little bit of bleeding because notice I'm folding that staple further into the patient's skin. I'm shoving it in rather than pulling it out. Okay, so don't do it that way. Instead, make sure that you've got those two teeth underneath the staple. Now I've kind of folded it over a little bit, so let me get in under there. There we go. And then you're going to simply gently pull down as you uh, squeeze down on your suture <laughs> staple remover, and it will gently fold that back out of the patient's skin. Okay. And so you're going to do that one by one, nice and gentle. It can cause a little bit of discomfort for the patient. You might even get a little bit of bleeding from some of these spots. Just uh, kind of pat that with a little bit of dry gauze um, and, and it should be just fine. It shouldn't bleed much at all, but you wanna be nice and careful. Now notice as you're doing this, you don't wanna be putting any downward pressure on the patient's laceration because if, you, if you're shoving down too far, notice you've got some very recently healed skin. Now obviously in a real patient, this should be healed up. If you are removing staples on a patient and it pops open like this, stop immediately and let a, a provider know about that, okay? 
unless you're the provider, obviously. If you're the provider, just stop immediately. They need to heal a little bit longer and, and go from there. But now if you are uh, doing this on a real patient, you wanna make sure that you are pulling up just a little bit, not, not a lot, but just a little bit. So as you are uh, pushing and squeezing with your staple remover, you're not pushing into the patient's newly healed laceration at all, okay? And this is uh, very simple, it's very straightforward. Just like removing uh, sutures, staple removal is not difficult. You just need to make sure that you use the right technique so that you don't hurt your patient and you remove them without causing any uh, risk of infection or dehiscence of that wound. So hopefully that makes sense. If you didn't already watch my video about how to place those staples, please go back and watch that video. Um, let me know if you have any questions. Again, go ahead and hit subscribe, hit like, follow, follow along. I'm trying to post a lot of good, useful videos for you. So thank you very much. Appreciate the support.